Wait, is it time for goal setting already? I'm still recovering from 2020. Hey there, if you're new to the channel, my name is Sarah Chen. I'm an investor, entrepreneur, and executive, and you can find out more about me from my social media links below or my website. I'm here because I'm all about feeling women's ambition, power, and influence. I know what it's like to be so full of potential but not know what next. So if you're a woman on the rise, this is the place for you. This is where we cut through every fairy concepts on career, business, and life and get deep, get personal, but get practical. So be sure to hit that notifications button and subscribe, like this video, because you don't want to miss a beat. Now let's get to today's episode. So yes, today is the final episode of this season and I thought I ended on a high with a topic that I really love, which is goal setting. And I've you know always been a goals driven person, but admittedly, I procrastinated a little bit with recording this video because frankly, I was in a little bit of an end year slump as I know we've all had a challenging 2020 and didn't really want to reflect on my year. Does that sound familiar? Well, let's get started because you know what I did? I watched a series of TED Talks that always gets me in a good mood and gets me lifted into thinking, okay, we gotta, you know, get to it. So let's get started. And you know, I realized that there are really a lot of different views out there on this topic. Some just don't believe in setting goals because it can be limiting. Some believe in big broad themes, while some live by the discipline of smart goals, which we'll get into, or the most recently popularized concept of OKRs, objectives and key results. I, as you guess, am in the goal setting camp, although I've certainly evolved my style of goal setting to be less rigid and more focused on the systems that I create than formulating the perfect end goal that I may not achieve this year, frankly. And here are my four key steps in goal setting to get you started. So I hope this helps. Number one, reflect on the past year. Before making plans for the year ahead, I start first with reflecting on the past year, the good, the bad, and the ugly. This usually takes me a little while because I want to be brutally honest with myself, which I struggle with, to take a step back and see the forest from the trees. I give it a couple of days and think about it over walks in the park, while I'm brewing coffee, when I have time to draw perspective on why I made certain choices, why I approach certain circumstances a certain way, and what that informs me about my own thinking, habits, systems, and frankly, patterns. Since I was about nine, actually, I've done some version of reflection and self-measurement, as crazy as that sounds. Today, I have an Excel spreadsheet where I grade myself on each line item that forms my goals. And I certainly believe that what gets measured gets done. And this is also an interesting exercise in realizing that often how far off you can be on assumptions you made about yourself in formulating the goals about a year ago. And whether a bad year or a good year, how much you've grown from the last time you wrote those very goals. And of course, I've evolved to be open and welcome line items that I did not even imagine possible for myself because my version of myself was limited before about a year ago. And you'd be surprised by how much exponential growth uh, that you allow for if you do that too. Number two, decide on a theme for your year and for your decade. And you know, this is a new concept I've incorporated into my goal setting, which is to create broad visionary themes for the year or for the decade. And this came about partly because I perhaps grew out of my naivety that I could achieve everything in a single year within 12 months, uh, getting frustrated with myself in the process, being upset that I didn't get to those goals. And frankly, taking some really good advice of some sage friends that I have around me, which is to say, Sarah, be patient with yourself. You have a long way to go in your career and there's so much more that you can achieve. Depending on where you are in life, it could be recovery, growth, and having a big theme you can remember and tie your actions to, I think, can be super helpful as it has been for me. And I'm happy to share that my theme next year, fingers crossed, is going to be breaking through. You know, I've had the classic immigrant story of moving here about two, three years ago, having had to hustle, no friends, no network, having to plant all those seeds. And I am keeping my fingers crossed and praying hard and doing all that I can to break through. So I love to hear what yours is. Comment below. I'd love to hear what themes you come up with. And then number three, think hard about the results that you want. When I think about many of the goals that I did not achieve, it all really stems from the fact that they were goals I thought 
I should have written down because it's what I thought was right at the time based on my age. By 20, I have to be this. By 25, I have to be this. But when I dug a little bit deeper, I frankly felt zero connection to it. In the words of Mary Kondo, if those of you know her, it did not bring me joy. And I know that sounds absurd, but there will be things we have to do that certainly do not bring us joy. But what I'm getting at is the most important questions you've heard me say a million times by now, which is, so what is my why? Why are you aiming for these results? What will these results get you? Is this goal something you truly want or is it that you somehow expect of yourself because of societal expectations or what others expect of you but not what you truly, truly want and it's your heart's desires? You know, studies have shown that the key reason why we don't achieve our goals that we set, our New Year's resolutions, is precisely because we're not setting the right goals and being frustrated in the process and finally tanking them all together. But what might help you in this process is in using a couple of methodologies. SMART is one that's popular where you set goals that are specific, measurable, attainable, realistic and time bound, right? So in this framework, an example would be instead of, oh, I just want to be fitter, I want to be skinny, it would be I want to get to say 18% body fat and build enough stamina to compete the 4th of July marathon, right? So that's a bit of a time frame there. By 4th of July, you need to get to this stage where you would be able to complete a full marathon. The other methodology that I like, which is useful for businesses is called OKR, Objectives and Key Results. The concept was created by Andy Grove in the 70s, but popularized by John Doerr, a popular VC who was one of the earliest investors in Google. OKR quickly became an important focus for Google and companies such as LinkedIn, Twitter, Dropbox, Spotify, Airbnb, and Uber, and many others have followed suit, including companies I've worked with, and I continue to see them in the market being super effective. Now, Doerr's formula is the best way to explain the structure of an OKR, which is, I will, objective, as measured by this set of key results. So objective is the what, what is it that you want to achieve, and key results is the how you're going to achieve it. And this, of course, must, as mentioned earlier, reflect your why, your values to inspire, not just yourself, but if you're doing this for your company, your team. For example, I think about in my work, Kerry Shaw, the CEO of Embodied Labs, one of our partner funds investees, WXR, and Kerry has become one of the pioneers in the use of VR in healthcare training, a topic super relevant in COVID. Her objective of building a robust immersive training platform for companies, particularly in healthcare, is centered on her personal why. You know, her mother was diagnosed with early onset Alzheimer's and she herself, as the caring daughter, struggled to explain to caregivers the exact nature of her mother's visual impairment. Today, she's built a VR platform to help senior care workers step into the experiences of those that they serve. And you know, if you notice the objectives here, it's more specific than a lofty goal. It must be significant, concrete, action-oriented, and as in Carrie's work, inspirational. Up next, number four, focus on building the systems to achieve your goals. So this is a principle that I live by and, and live and breathe by. That again, in the words of James Clear, you do not rise to the level of your goals, you fail to the level of your systems. And this is reflected in one of my favorite TED Talks of all time by Stephen Dunier, an ADHD child turned hedge fund success story to Yard Bomber. I highly recommend it and I'll actually link it in my description below, if not a card above here. In a nutshell, he says that ultimately, what stands between us and achieving our largest ambitions have far less to do with talent and capability. Instead, far more how we approach problems and make decisions to solve them. And because of the continuous and compounding nature, you know, I really believe in this, of those millions of tiny decisions, a marginal improvement on our process has a large impact on our overall results. What he says is we don't control the results, but what we do are the little tiny decisions we make every day that move the probability of us achieving this result. 
for Stephen. He started by calculating his commute time in London, 45 minutes a day that translated to 360 hours a year that was wasted just listening to music, iTunes. He removed all music to keep to discipline and instead tuned into German and not too long after was able to be absolutely fluent. He got hooked and used this technique to then start different things in his personal life from auto racing to flying planes and yes, yard bombing and I'm not going to tell you what it is, you have to research that. But you know, if running a marathon is a goal, training to run a marathon by running X miles each week is a system and that's what the key is here. The key is to start with the big concepts, break them down to small manageable tasks and think about how you can make marginal improvements along the way. So what are the habits? What are the daily routines that you have today that you can think about hacking up. And my final piece of advice is start where you are. You probably already have some persistent habits you can use as triggers to plug in the behaviors you want to use to build towards your largest goals. Two of the biggest misconceptions about goal setting is that it means more work or at least a disappointment about not being able to achieve everything you've hoped. Really effective goal setting allows you to do less by focusing your efforts on what you really want to do and really want to achieve. It also removes the disappointment of not achieving everything because unrealistic expectations are now removed. So be disciplined in how you set your goals and choose very, very wisely. Build your momentum, celebrate the little wins, and I wish you the very best of luck. And there you have it this week's episode which is the last of 2020 and before i sign off i did want to take a moment to say a big thank you to all of you who've showed up here on my channel who've shared my videos liked my videos i so appreciate that you know this channel that i built in the last couple of months of 2020 was born out of the desire to help many women who reached out to me because they were struggling through a challenging year as i have and you know your support is what keeps me going keeps us going and keeps this channel going so be sure if you haven't already to turn on the notifications share and subscribe because we will be back with a bang next year i promise you and uh, i love to hear what other topics you'd like me to cover and we will also be interviewing a couple of exciting figures so stay tuned for that in the meantime uh, if you're celebrating merry christmas and happy holidays and i'll see you so thank you so much